everybody. I'm Henry Kronqvist, and I'm the Dean of the Arduous College of Business and Economics at Chapman University in Southern California. And we're really thrilled today to be with uh, Jordan Hobson, who is one of our graduates, uh, uh, who is currently working for BCGX. And my name is Tori Wynn. I am the current co-host, and I am the class of 2026, as well as the Arduous College of Business and Economics Senator. Today, we're here with Jordan, and let's kick it off with the first question. It's pretty easy, but we do want to know. It's important that students at Chapman especially build a routine. So Jordan, can you tell us how you build routines? Do you set goals? Do you practice it? What's your agenda? Definitely. Yeah. And also, it's a pleasure to meet and be here with everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan. I am a principal of strategic design at BCGX. But yeah, the first question, I love it. Um, so because I work in consulting, my schedule, it is highly variable and it changes every day. So the way that I build uh, a routine schedule is honestly doing a checklist. That's the best way for me to start um, just so that I can think through the things that are the highest priority and get through them um, through the day. And then if there's anything that's immovable on my schedule, just making sure that I have those things blocked, like whether it's a dentist appointment or the doctor, or making sure that I'm at least having a touch point with the team that I'm working with, which is like a stand-up meeting, um, which happens typically at the beginning of each day. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, Jordan, I'm sort of uh, interested in uh, the uh, BCG and the X. So when I think about BCG, back in the day, it was Boston Consulting Group, Management Consulting, and you're in within the X. So tell us a little bit about what that is and how is that different than BCG? Yeah, I'll uh, give you a little bit of history first. So there were actually three businesses that existed before X. There was Boston Consulting Group Digital Ventures, which is actually the company that I started at. And we were mostly focused on new venture, new business build. Um, there was a side of the business called Gamma, which was more so focused on data science. And then there was a side of the business called Platinian, which was focused on digital transformations. So BCG saw that um, that there would be more opportunity if all of us were able to work closer together. So they decided to create BCGX so that it removed all of the walls between each of the businesses. So what that has meant for me over the past years, I get to work with the best and the brightest people across all of the businesses that we have, and we can go after the most interesting problems that companies have. So the way that you can think of BCGX is we're the tech uh, we're the tech and business build arm of BCG. So BCG may set a strategy, but we're the ones that will actually go in and build the products. So we have product managers, engineers, designers, everything that you need to build a business or a product. That's really great. It seems like you have a lot of experience in the work field. And so maybe you can tell us what is the best job decision that you have made so far, or even telling us what was your stepping stone or turning point to becoming successful? When did you realize that? Uh, honestly, I think the best decision that I ever made in my career was stop comparing myself to other people and then decide what is it that I want to do and then start planning backwards from there. And that's been the biggest career unlock for me that I've had, um, just because I haven't been in my head. Working at BCG, you're working with the best and the brightest people. So if you're constantly looking at other people and assessing yourself against them, you're just wasting time and you're wasting calories when you can just be you know, freer <laughs> if you focus on the things that energize you and, and what benefits you the most. I can totally see that. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about design thinking. So this is an important concept in uh, in business today. So can you yep. tell us a little bit about, you know, what is that? And, and is there an example of uh, design thinking, how it has been used in business, it, it may be implemented in some project by yourself? Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll first by saying what design thinking is not. A lot of companies think that design thinking is creating a workshop and having people move post-it notes around on the board and and that's it at the end of the day design thinking is making sure that you're removing your biases through the product development process and you're placing the target customer and their problems at the core of what you're trying to solve and then making sure that that stakeholder is 
um, that stakeholders included throughout the whole product development process and that you're not steering away from their needs. So it's not catering to what, what an executive wants per se, but it's how best can you align the needs of a customer with the business needs. So that that's the best way that I could describe what design thinking is. Um, and now for an example of a project, um, I would say one project, um, and it's it's on my LinkedIn, so I can talk about it, um, is when I created, I helped create a business that's called Avail. So it's a car sharing business, and we worked with Allstate to set this up. Um, and at the time, um, you're probably familiar, you've heard of Turo, which is a pretty big brand in the car sharing space. They already had a ton of um, market share. And for Allstate to enter in the space, like you really need to go after and solve a unique problem. You can't go directly head to head or else you're going to end up, you're going to end up, you know, not, not making it. So some of the unique problems that we found in the very beginning were people that want to share their car with other people. They feel, you know, uncomfortable meeting up with someone that's, that they've never met before or meeting up at a gas station all of those places. So what we decided to do was have it around communities, places where people may have more trust. So one example of that was we had car sharing at the airport. So when you're flying out, you're likely going to have your car that's going to be sitting there and you know collecting dust. Why not rent it out and make a couple of bucks? So you can basically leverage the parking lot that's already there that has attendance that can do the whole transaction for you. And in, in those instances, you didn't even have to see the other person that was renting your car. You just come back and you see that it's clean and it's ready. And the other one um, was car sharing within large apartment communities. Um, so you can imagine, I think uh, it might still be down there by Chapman. Um, you could think of maybe Sandhu or maybe even the Avalon apartments or the stadium lofts. Like imagine if you are able to rent out your car only to people that are within that community. So you have a higher sense of trust because you're all a part of the same community, you have the same socioeconomic status. So even though that business has um, taken turns throughout the years, even to this day, one of the core things is it's car sharing within um, parking lots, essentially. So it's not people having to do the exchanges at their home. It's going to a place where you'd likely feel more comfortable because there are people around, there are cameras, et cetera. So there's, a, there's additional safety. That's really great, Jordan. I like how you value the clean and environmental state of it, but also people's state of mind as well. So moving into a more student mindset, what is one piece of advice that you would give students before they graduate? Should they take more classes? Should they introduce themselves to a special professor at Chapman? What's a good way to get connected? Um, I think one of the things that I would say is do as many internships as possible in your undergrad. Um, and for me, I did five, which is a lot, but it was the last one, the fifth one that ultimately set me up for my first job that I had coming out of undergrad And the benefit of doing multiple internships is you can get better internships because you have experience, but you can also try out spaces that you're unsure about. So that then when you're ready to get a job, you don't end up in a profession that you don't like. So not to say that um, accounting is bad, but I learned very early that that was not uh, what brought me joy um, at the end of the day. But it did teach me um, to be very diligent um, and to be able to um, to be able to read data as well, too. Um, so I'm very thankful for that experience in multiple ways, but yeah, I would definitely say do as many internships as possible. On that note, could you uh, elaborate a little bit about the internships? Uh, I mean, what were some of the ones that you went through and what did you like take away from them and how did you then leverage one to get to the next level? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think the first one that I did was actually, um, for Chapman. So it was for Brandman University. So it was back in the time when they were going through rebranding. Um, and that one was interesting. It was unpaid. So a, a lot of mine were a mixture of paid and unpaid um, back then, um, but at least got me first into an office. And then from that one, I ended up doing an accounting internship, which I actually kept, 
I think my whole time was at Chapman, but it's because it was paid. So even though I knew that it wasn't something that I wanted to do long term, it was a way that I could make extra money while I was a student. Um, but that internship, it was for a small company, um, like a small tech company that's down there. Um, and then I ended up um, interning at Edwards Life Sciences, and I did it twice. So I first interned in their supply chain department, um, which I didn't necessarily find joy, but it brought the skills that I did take away from it was data analysis and being able to understand demand forecasting, which is pretty crucial for marketing, which is the which is the space that I that ultimately brought me joy. But being able to understand the analytical side of marketing is just as important as understanding the creative side. Um, and from there, I ended up interning at Adidas um, in their global market research department. And that's the one that ultimately kind of set me on the path that I'm on today. Um, and then I came back and I interned one more time at Edwards Life Sciences, but in their business intelligence department. So it, it fell within strategy, but I would say like the finance side of strategy. Um, so the relationships that I had there were people that formerly worked at Hyundai Motor America. And the next place that I left for my first full-time job um, after undergrad, my boss had relationships with a company um, because they had hired that agency before, um, which is called Fuel Cycle. Um, and then when I was working at Adidas, I was also working with this agency as a vendor. So I had multiple connections, which ultimately helped me land a job there. Which is so awesome as well that you talk about you or trying out the different things and trying to figure out, hey, where am I the best fit, you know? Uh, and uh, I think that's what I take away. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That's super important. Uh, listen, strategy is an important concept in business as well. And it's uh, it's part of your title. And maybe, maybe explaining to um, some of our students who may think about strategy from like the domain of sports or gaming. I mean, in business, what does it entail? And why are you excited about strategy? Yeah, when I was a student, I would always say that I want to do strategy, but I had no idea like what exactly it meant or the application, but strategy to me, having worked as long as I've worked, is critical thinking. Like strategy, you can be in a strategic role, but it can be for any discipline, whether it's accounting, finance, um, marketing, um, or even thinking about the product development cycle. So in my role now as a strategic designer, what I'm responsible for is I'm really the owner when, we, when we're creating new products and businesses of who is the, defining who is the target customer of a product that we're going to be building. Like what is the persona of, of that individual? What, did, what motivates them? What are their needs? What do they care about? And then creating um, the solutions that fit those needs and making sure that we have a feature set that is compelling, um, that'll get someone to sign up, purchase, um, and, you know, love the product and then ultimately be retained by the product that we're developing. Um, so I, I think that's what strategy is for me. It's, it's, it's ultimately critical thinking. That's really great, Jordan. Thank you so much for sharing. It's been really great hearing a lot of things. Is there anything that you'd like to share or shout out in terms of your social medias or new projects coming up to our Chapman campus? Oh, um, social media. I'm, I'm not as active on my Twitter as I should be, but it is my name. It's Jordan Hobson. Um, and then shout outs, um, shout outs to a couple of my professors that are still there, uh, Gokshin, um, and then also Nick Vismer. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, well, uh, Jordan, um, Jordan Hobson, we really appreciate the time with you today. We learn a great deal about your career path and how you ended up with the BCGX and uh, how you went through a couple of different uh, disciplines and uh, ultimately found your passion in marketing and strategy. And uh, thanks for taking your time today. And uh, we look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you so much.